Welcome to another Scarred Cast Battle Report. Today we have 1500 points of Dark Eldar versus 1500 points of Ultramarine Space Marines led by Vulcan himself. Um, I'm testing my 1500 point list for the Michael Mudd Memorial Tournament, which is a charity tournament that we run in Stratford, Ontario every year to raise money for the OSBCA in the name of Michael Mudd, who was a friend of ours who passed away in a car accident. So, in lieu of that, uh, we've asked somebody to set up terrain for us as a uh, tournament style terrain setup so that we have nothing uh, to do with it as we will be going to uh, tr uh, the tables will be set up with terrain before the day of the event okay so on to the army showcase first we have my 1500 point dark ally list I've done a couple of changes to my list since our last game and uh, leading the army we have my newly painted Archon with a Venom Blade. That is Mr. Archon over there. You can kind of see him a little bit. Let's showcase him. Uh, his Venom Blade is actually sticky tacked on so that I can magnetize it later. He's with four Incubi in a Venom. The Venom is no upgrades, just one cannon and a Venom. Every single one of my Venoms has just one cannon and it's just a 55 point Venom. Uh, I have a Farsia, 90 point Farsia with Doom, which I switch out for Divination and um, Wounds of Warding. Then for troops, I have two 10-man warrior squads with splinter cannons, that's all they have, in raiders with grizzly trophies. I have two five-man uh, witch units with haywire grenades and stock venoms. Um, then I have my Eldar jet bikes, just three Eldar jet bikes. Then I have uh, for heavy support, two ravagers with three lances and grizzly trophies. And one Ravager, uh, Razor Wing, sorry, with Disintegrators. And of course, my six Reaver Jet Bikes with two Heat Lances and a Champion. And that is 1500 points. Okay, on to Brad's Ultramarine Army. You've seen it before. Howdy, Brad. And uh, you have, of course. Oh, I have uh, five careers in uh, all, all going to be Thunder Hammer Storm Shields, led by Vulcan, uh, in the Land Raider Crusader, uh, added the uh, Multi Delta. Uh, Thunderfire Cannon because it's amazing in 6th edition. Yep. Uh, I'm going to try Storm Talon. Uh, a drop pod with 6 Stirring Guard. Yep. And uh, 2 Rhinos with full tactical squads with uh, Multi Belta. Uh, and the Sergeant will have a Combi Flamer and Melta Bombs. And it will have a regular Flamer too. Okay. And the Stirring Guard are armed with? Uh, they are armed with uh, 3 uh, Combi Meltas and 3 Combi Flamers. Okay. Fantastic. And the, the Storm Raven has the Typhoon Rockets? Yes. Okay, fantastic. So the mission we've rolled up is basic uh, big guns never tire. So we'll be having uh, heavy support counter scoring. It is five objectives, so we will go ahead and put those down, and it's Dawn of War deployment. So stay tuned. Thanks a lot for tuning in, and uh, enjoy the battle report. Um, Brad... Uh, won the world to go fist and decided to go fist. What you can keep on deploying. If you like. um, he's going to deploy while I'm doing this. One objective is on the top of this building over here. He has decided to put another objective on the top of that building over there. I put that objective in the middle there. He's put an objective in that corner. Remember, heavy is scoring this game, and I decided to do that because I spread out and I'm faster than him. Uh, for warlord traits, he chose personal and rolled furious charge in my deployment zone which is 12 inches up. I chose strategic and I got my outflanking units Gavacute sensors which is useless. That's why we usually have a house roof for it. But, um, testing for the tournament. My Farseer rolled Misfortune. Malediction that makes um, enemy unit re-roll successful saves. So I'm looking forward to trying that out because I haven't actually rolled that one yet. And we'll be back after deployment is done. In deployment we have a Thunderfire Cannon. Uh, 10-man tactical squad, a Vulcan and Terminators, a 5-man uh, combat squad in that Rhino, 5-man combat squad in there. Uh, they rolled uh, nothing of note for that objective up top. Then you have the drop pod and the, the uh, Storm Talon in reserves. And then I did this to protect my jet bikes from the drop pod with the flamers. So I kind of bubble wrapped them a little bit. Uh, so that's an empty Venom. That is a unit of witches. That is a full venom with witches. That is a ravager. Um, here I have a raider that's empty. A full raider of warriors. Warriors spread out this building. This is a grab well generator, so it's harder for them to charge me. Farseer back there with them. I rolled pain token for my drugs. And of course, this ravager right here as well. I have, uh, oh, and the incubator in the middle there. I have the Eldar jet bikes and the raise wing in reserve. And. 
Okay, I'm not going to steal the initiative because it is an objective-based game. It is Night Fight Turn 1. And we will begin the game. Thanks a lot. Enjoy the show. And uh, stay tuned. The drop pod decided to aim for here to try and melt that to death. And then scattered 11 inches over here. They, instead of jumping out and committing suicide, ran back. Uh, just got based almost into the building. Then the rest of the army decided to abandon that tactical squad. <laughs> and basically everything is gunning it for my little flanking support units over here. Which means you have the Terminators, 5 combat squad, full tactical squad, and the Thunderfire cannon that failed to do anything to that venom. Okay, so now we're moving on to Dark Eldar. Turn. Uh, Ravager opened up fire, immobilizing and putting one hull point on the Land Raider. Yay! Um, these two venoms, one venom fired at the Thunderfire Cannon, knocking it out. I love poison. And the second one, second venom fired at the, the um, Tech Marine and didn't do anything, made all the saves. And then Brad continued to make saves all turn. They made a lot of saves. I didn't kill one of those five guys with ten warriors shooting from that unit with a splinter cannon. Ten warriors shooting from that raider with a splinter cannon. Um, all the cover saves from the lances there included. And then I, what I did is I boosted up my incubi um, venom up there to try and get him in uh, so that when that storm talent comes on and blows me out of the sky, I'm at least nearby his units. My Reaver Jet Bikes boosted over the Stone Guard, did 12 hits, and then uh, did uh, three wounds, no, five wounds, and then uh, he made all the saves as well there. <laughs> so they are going to die. Good thing I have pain tokens for my first drug. That gives them a chance. Okay, so now we're moving on to Space Marine. Turn two, and Brad is going to roll for his Storm Talon. Does it arrive? It does. Okay, we'll return. Storm Talon blew in and blew that up. Uh, they That rhino moved 12 inches and tried to snapshot a bunch of stuff to knock out the Venom first, but that didn't fail. They passed their... So they wreck the Venom, which is past the morale test. That Venom is still fine. Uh, Vulcan wanting to actually play in the game, disembarked and moved up, threatening the Land Raider Crusader, shot into my Ravager, and did one hull point on a glance. Uh, that Rhino immobilized itself on the area terrain. This unit of warriors moved up, of Space Marines, sorry, moved up, and together with this drop pod, fired at that Raider, and uh, didn't do anything to it. The Stern Guard that I failed to destroy wiped out my bikes. So, yeah, <laughs> my bikes are dead. And this unit over here moved over here and blew up this Venom, and the Archon and the Equi passed their morale tests. Okay, so, on my turn, I have reserves to come in. Do the jet bikes arrive? They do not. And does the Razor Wing arrive? It does not. Okay, and we will be back. Um, we had this flank over here kind of move up and start firing a firebase. The Incubi and the uh, Archon went into that little uh, combat squad and murdered them horribly. Um, so now they are at Feel No Pain and Furious Charge for their pain tokens. Um, I killed one Marine out of this combat squad and killed the three Stone Guard with Flamers that were out here, but the Melted Gun Flamers, I mean the Melted Gunners are still, no, yeah. Melted Gunners are still in there. And then you have the Drop Pod, which is fine. This kind of moved over to shoot at the Stone Guard. Didn't do anything to them, didn't do them, didn't do anything to them. The Witches that were out here, got out here, threw a grenade, did nothing. Charged in, I actually got snapshotted by two Flamers from inside, and he got hit six hits and five wounds, and I was able to save two of them with Feel No Pain, and they ran in with two Haywire Grenades, putting two hull points on the Rhino. And of course, that moved over, so that if that Storm Talon wants to deal with it, it's forced to go into hover mode. Okay, and we will return after Space Ring Turn 3. Uh, we had some tactical marines and stern guard fire into the incubi and kill two out of the three, even with saves and feel of pain. The storm raven blew over this way. Put a penetrating hit on this, knocking down, uh, so it's got a second hull point on it, and stopped it from shooting, so it can only snap fire on the Ravager now. Um, the unit in here, Flamer, just clipped the, um, the Venom, but killed one of the witches here, and then um, also knocked out the Venom there, blowing it up with a multi-melter, killing two. They are now pinned. She didn't run. We actually forgot to do the combat 
combat for her haywire grenade. So she's going to try hit with a haywire grenade, and she misses. Uh, all of the morale was passed, and they the terminators ran up six inches. So now for reserves, I have the raise wing. Shows up and the jet bikes. So he gets a total of twelve attacks. Show up. Okay. So we will return. Ravager got one snapshot onto this, but then failed to do anything. Uh, the one lone witch moved back, threw a haywire grenade, wrecked it, they got out but are not pinned, so now they're going to go after that unit. I wiped out that unit on top with basically everything they could shoot at it. The four marines that were there, including the raised wing who loosed two missiles and all his disintegrator cannons. The terminators successfully part denied the witch on the misfortune from the Farsi that's in there. So therefore, I didn't shoot at them because I was he wasn't going to be able to reroll saves on that. And my fa my um, archon and his incubi moved up and ran. And then this empty raider that was over here moved on and then boosted up here to pick them up if needed. This ravager moved across, and these Eldar jet bikes moved on here and boosted up here to try and get that and to consolidate my position on these two objectives. Okay. Uh, uh, Terminators moved up, ran an inch. Um, this fired at the Razor Wing, knocking out two hull points on the Disintegrator Cannon, and it can only snap fire next turn. Um, what the Stern Guard fired and killed the last Incubi, and that unit got out, and that Tactical Marine unit got out and murdered that uh, three Witchman unit, and then the Tech Marine actually came out of hiding and murdered that last Witch over there. So now we're moving on to the Razor Wing turned around, moved away. The Farseer Malediction, the Terminators were no longer there because the rest of my army decided to shoot at them. Um, they're gonna boost up and there, just didn't do that. I'm gonna move that in, in a second. There, didn't do anything over there. I put a wound on Vulcan and this guy finally snapshotted and took out the uh, Storm Talon. And we'll be back after Space Marine turn five. Dark Eldar turn five. Uh, the store is closing, therefore this will be last turn. The Ravager moved up and boosted to contest this objective. The Eldar jet bikes that had started on the way to that corner have come around, shot the tech marine to death, and assault moved to control that objective. The unit in that raider moved out into that ruin to take that objective, and then that unit has that objective. So at the moment I have three objectives, and I killed off the stern guard. We are going to do another Vulcan versus Archon battle report. So what we'll do is first... Brad's gonna roll his snapshot with a heavy flamer. He does three hits with a heavy flamer. Needing twos to wound the Archon, Twin Links, because it's Vulcan Flamer. So that's three wounds. Let's see if the Shadow Field, the Archon Shadow Field holds. First Shadow Field is okay. Second Shadow Field. Shorts out. Feel no pain. Is okay. And then the last save. No save. Third field, no, last field, no pain. No. So my Archon has taken a wound and no longer has a shadow field. So this will be a do or die. Um, and we're going to move Vulcan out just to make this epic enough. Just so you guys can see it. So we both have two wounds. Of course, if Vulcan gets any one wound in there, it's going to be uh, a moot point. So my Archon has six attacks on the charge with his Venom Blade. He does have Furious Charge though, so he will be re-rolling his two wound rolls. So needing threes to hit, and he hit with all six. And needing twos to wound with his Venom Blade, and he wounded three times, but thanks to his Strength 4, he gets to re-roll these three, and he gives six wounds to Vulcan. So Vulcan needs to pass four out of six armor saves, or five out of six armor saves in order to survive. And he does it! He's gone! Our concert vibes! And anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Um, uh, this was, of course, a tournament game, so a lot of the stuff I did in this game was because if I would have been in a tournament, I would do it uh, to survive, like getting the raise wing off. Um, so sorry if it wasn't as climactic, we just did that thing at the end there. And uh, Dark Eldar victory. Thanks a lot for watching. Of course, you can check out the podcast, which is on iTunes now, and the blog site, uh, scarred.podbean.com. Follow me on Twitter. You can go over there, check everything out. And I always, of course, try to bring you quality content. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.